Last time, I built the launch tube assembly for my real-life, full-size, fully-functioning Spanker rocket launcher from Halo, but I still need to build the rest of it. Sometimes, on big builds like this, I procrastinate and I put off the hard part till the end, and then it ends up taking forever. But this time, I'm going right for the meat of it, and I'm the most worried about that clamshell part that locks around the spinning rocket tube portion, and the latch that keeps it closed, because it's completely open on one side. So if I can get that knocked out, the rest of this build should be really easy. These black pieces are aluminum rails from a junk 3D printer that I had. I could never get it to work and neither could anyone else that I know, so I decided instead of taking up space, I'd repurpose it and turn it into the center section of the frame for the launcher. These hinges I custom made from thick aluminum plate. They actually took quite a bit of time because they ride on ball bearings and they're very accurate so that this thing opens and closes very well. This part will come open and I'll be able to put in the rocket set and then this will close. But as it sits right now, this doesn't have the rollers for this section to be able to spin inside of it. And the frame isn't terribly stiff right now and it needs a system to make it actually lock up so that when it shuts, it stays closed, which is difficult because nothing touches on the front side of the launcher. So that means the lockup mechanism has to be at the back. The disengagement thing has to be at the front. So I gotta figure that out. I'm gonna get the rollers on first, but I think I have a good idea for the locking system. works. Those are going to need locked in the upright position. Chink. Locked. Locked. Actually locked. Yes. This is almost finished and almost perfect. There's a couple little things I wanna change, but I wanna show you how it works first before I move on to the next thing. When the handle's back, there's slack in the cables and it allows this to open. But when the handle's forward, it puts tension on the cables and then as it rotates just past center, that tension keeps the handle locked in position, which keeps the frame locked closed. There's a fair amount of tension on this right now, but it still moves a little bit. The leverage comes from these pulleys here. So the one change that I may need to make is to move these forward 
If they come further forward, there's more leverage pulling this shut. And that doesn't matter right now because it'll hold the cylinder in the way it is, but when it's being driven by the stepper motor, it might become an issue. The center cylinder section from the launch tubes, which I had installed in the last video, I took back off so that I could test fit it in this. It rolls really well, but when this is locked closed, it's a little bit crunchy because this is printed out of PET G and it's kind of a squishy plastic. Before I really go too far, I wanna reinforce these sections, permanently install them on the tubes, that way I can keep going and not break this part. To make these 3D printed parts stronger, but still have some flex, I need a composite that has those characteristics. And the perfect one for the job is a Negra. It's a fiber made of polypropylene. It is extremely tough, but it is also flexible, which means this will be able to get pinched a little bit by the rollers and it won't crack, but it'll make it very, very strong. So I laid up the Negra in epoxy and then used shrink wrap, electrical tape, foam, and 3D printer belts to smash this stuff down into the grooves where it needed to be so that I still had nice round roller areas. And because I used shrink wrap to tie that on, I could still work on these pieces, which means I could drill the holes to put some expanding foam inside. This would help stiffen it up and keep it from falling apart if it did actually crack. And I sprayed water inside first because right now it's winter time and it's very low humidity inside the garage. And water is what makes this expanding foam set up. And once they were sufficiently filled with foam, trimmed off the excess and got ready to epoxy them to the launch tubes. With them on the tubes, I could epoxy the pieces to themselves and apply epoxy to the tubes for where they would be slid into place. And then I clamped all those together. Not with that clamp, with a much bigger clamp and waited for it to set up. It's on and it's very strong now. And this had to get permanently attached and all that stuff done right now because the next thing is to make the stock. In order to make the stock, I need to know the exact length between where the frame rides on this and this rear section here, because otherwise it wouldn't line up and it would look goofy. But also because the contact points that allow the rockets to launch are gonna be back here on the cylinder. And if they don't line up, then the rockets don't go off. Now that this is permanently affixed and I know this exact length, I can make the stock, which is gonna get made out of expanded PVC board. For projects in the past where I've used PVC boards, I've cut out the parts using a jigsaw and that's worked fine. But this time it's gonna be a lot faster and easier because my friend Dan, that helped me print some of the parts in the last video, offered to cut them out using his CNC router. And it was a lot faster and very, very accurate and resulted in perfect parts. And that is how you get your name on my work table. If you don't happen to live just down the street from me and have an incredibly well outfitted shop to help me make parts for my projects, you could always just join my Patreon, like all of these other people whose names are on the table that are helping to support this channel and make this possible. So if you wanna see what Dan's up to at the workshop or join my Patreon, links will be in the description below. Attaching this stock to the frame is a perfect example of one of my favorite parts of builds like this. Diving headlong into assembling a unique one-off prototype with a loose plan knowing there's gonna be fun little problems and challenges to overcome. Like the PVC board being far more flexible than I remembered and having to come up with ways to tie it into the frame to make it more rigid. But also finding lucky little surprises like the aluminum pipe scrap that I found laying around the shop is actually a beautiful friction fit onto the inner frame and makes a perfect front handle extension. At this point though, even though I've tied the center PVC board into the aluminum frame as much as I can, it's still floppier than I want it to be. But I won't know if it's rigid enough until I put the exterior pan Panels on. But right now, with all these major pieces starting to come together, this thing is starting to look pretty awesome. I started putting the electronics in just to see how well they're going to fit in the space that I have available. But once I started seeing this thing all come together, it made me really excited and I couldn't help myself. I put the spanker sticker on. With all this put together, let's see how it looks holding it because I haven't even picked this thing up yet. Battery fell out. It's, it doesn't weigh too much. The handle's a little far out there, but how does it look? Will it get me dates? There is one nagging question that's been bothering me about this rocket launcher though. This is an exact replica of the projectile that the Spanker fires in the Halo games. I would prefer that mine fires these, but this has the aerodynamics of a Pringles can and will be unstable and will probably take a lot of testing to get it to fly right when it comes out. I could just design a rocket that I know is going to be stable, but it wouldn't be game accurate and that bothers me. And I'd like to know if it bothers you as much as it bothers me. So let me know in the comments whether I should try to get these to work or just design something of my own. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Work, work, work.